excuse me a little. <clears throat> Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful spring day. It's for one week shy of spring day. Uh, here in the great state of Texas, on the here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this glorious Sunday. It is Sunday, March 12, 2023. And so the little dog and I we're just getting ready to head off to the biggest party on the planet, the South by Southwest Music Festival. So we had, you know, found our party, and I just found out that the little dog is not invited. Not invited. All the little kids, bring your kids, but leave your dogs at home. So, uh, bring your kids, leave your dogs at home. Uh, so anyway, I might not be going to the biggest party. Uh, this damn, uh, as much as the anti-dog, it's the uh, pro-breeder thing. It's just like, you know, maybe if it was leave your little brat and your dog at home, that would kind of, you know what I'm saying, would kind of balance out, but I'm thinking I'm going to make a, a, a silent protest to the clueless moron breeders out there. Bring your dog, I'm sorry, bring your kids, leave your dog at home. They, they, them is fighting words to a uh, doomer with a little doomer dog. So anyway, since I'm not in a hurry to get out of here now, we are going on this beautiful Sunday afternoon for our uh, Chronicle of the Collapse. I guess we're going to uh, head back over to medium.com, medium.com, and uh, dip into the cauldron of doom this is actually was written a few weeks ago i i first read this guy's name is joe denial no his name is not joe denial he is not in denial his name is joe jamal maybe d j e m a l demal or jamal anyway joe has 223 followers and he describes himself, he is a gardener on a farm in Kent. Gardener on a farm in Kent. I'm assuming he means Kent, England and not Kent, Ohio, but who, who knows. But anyway, Joe is feeling sad. Joe is feeling sad. So why is Joe sad? <clears throat> take it away. Deep sadness watching the end of a dying ideal. In 1997, I could see two potential paths for the future of the world. So 26 years ago, Joe saw two potential paths for the future of the world. One was grounded in my belief in science and technology, and the other provoked by my horror at seeing the natural world being destroyed around me. Five years earlier, in 1992, I had been diagnosed with an illness that at the time was a death sentence. As it turned out, that particular end was averted, but the changes it made in the way I perceived the world had irreversibly altered my path in it. My physics degree was binned, B-I-N-N-N-E-D. He must be from England, you know, thrown in the trash is what I think he was saying. My physics degree was binned <clears throat> and I lost all interest in pursuing the path of success. It gave me time to look at the world properly. 
And what did you find when looking at the world properly? <clears throat> I had already known, even before my diagnosis, years before, that the human species was in deep trouble. I understood the exponential function well enough to see what many others before me had seen, that that never-ending growth was not the great thing that economists and politicians declared, but a disaster in hiding, which would lead to the most awful calamity for all of us sooner or later. Many people don't get exponential growth. It creeps up on you looking like nothing at all for most of the period of growth, and instead of the reindeer island analogy, we're going to go back for anyone just going down this rabbit hole. He goes with the water lily analogy. This is one of the many analogies. <clears throat> Let me explain. We have a pond with a water lily growing in it. The lily doubles every year and the pond can support 1,024 lily plants. Initially, it looks like nothing. There's one, then two, then four, then eight, then 16, and in the sixth year, there are 32 lily plants growing in the pond. That's a bit over 3%. Nothing, eh? But the following year, it's 64 lilies, year after 128, then 256, and in the 10th year, there are 512 lilies. But only half the pond is covered. Surely there's lots of time left. No, in the 11th year, the pond is full of lilies and no more growth is possible there. Now, here's where this becomes relevant to us. Industrial civilization, the system that almost the entire world is utterly dependent on, apart per perhaps for a very few uncontacted hunter-gatherer tribes, has the exponential function hidden all over the place. Yes, industrial civilization has the exponential function hidden all over the place. The most obvious one, well, the most obvious one to about 1% uh, of the planet, the one everybody has heard of, everybody, huh? I guess Joe's definition of everybody and mine is different. The most obvious one, the one everybody has heard of, is the human population. The doubling time for the global human population is around 61 years under current conditions. That would mean that given no change to the way the world works, the global population in 2084 would be around 16 billion people. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's really, uh, that's really gonna happen. Uh, this seems like a very unlikely possibility to me, and there are some very good reasons for that. Ignoring changes in fertility rates. There are a whole lot of other exponentials involved in humanity's existence on Earth. Let's start with the most important one, energy. Until the first large-scale large exploitation of fossil fuels, there has been low-level usage in coal, mostly for domestic heating for a couple of hundred years that we know of, 
but it wasn't exploited on a massive scale until the 17th century. Pretty much the entire the entirety of energy needs for people came from solar energy that had first been captured by plants. Plants provided food, fodder for animals, and were used to make fire for a whole range of applications. But the amount of plant material that you can produce is limited by a number of things. Soil fertility, the amount of sunlight available, and the climate. There were also limitations due to biological losses, plant diseases, competition with insects and other animals. So human civilization had pretty hard limitations on how much they could grow. Many civilizations pushed these limits in good years only to be faced with famine and collapse during the hard times. All right, we have a, uh, an Amazon Prime delivery. This is the third Amazon Prime delivery today. Especially if the climate deteriorated, civilization after civilization collapsed, mostly because of this issue. All right, I think what I'm getting, guys, I need to take a break because I'm getting my new uh, stainless steel, my new stainless steel hot water boiler. I cannot believe it. I, I, I ordered this thing about 21 hours ago. Really? And here it is. <laughs> you are the third Amazon Prime delivery man here today. Oh, for real? Yeah, I don't know why you don't all get on the same bus. I don't know why I need it. I, I but I do appreciate it. Yes, you have a nice one. You too. You know, this is why I love global industrial civilization. I went on Amazon.com yesterday on a Saturday out here in the middle of nowhere in this little town in the middle of Texas and ordered one of these, uh, you know, one of these 1500 watt where you plug in and you get your coffee water boiled in 30 seconds because I didn't want to wait three minutes for the regular stove to heat my water. So I uh, ordered that thing 21 hours ago. Here it is in the box. And so this is the third Amazon Prime delivery today on a Sunday and you wonder why we are doomed but man enjoy your uh, Amazon Prime deliveries while you still can anyway and uh, you know as this is a perfect illustrate I love when everything I'm saying about why we're doomed happens in the middle of a rant anyway back to Joe then along came fossil fuels, coal, oil, natural gas, and Amazon dot prime. And all of a sudden, those limits were gone. At least that's what the vast majority of people thought. And it led to a great flowering to industrial civilization to Amazon.com making three deliveries in one day. <clears throat> Along with population growth and Amazon Prime, another exponential growth started happening. The growth in energy extraction from fossil fuels to feed that population dependent on Amazon.com. Literally, in the case of nitrates from the Haber-Bosch process. Apart from fossil fuels, other materials required by this now burgeoning, other materials were required by this now burgeoning industrial civilization, such as the stainless steel in my new coffee water heater. Just about every element in the periodic table 
was used to produce the goods that this civilization required, so another exponential kicked off in resource extraction, and yet another in food production, such as heating your water for your planet eating coffee. And that's, don't forget about money, the money to buy your little coffee water heaters from Amazon.com. In purely physical terms, money is a representation of energy yet to be extracted. It is magic into existence. I love that. I did not realize the word magic was a verb. It, money is magic into existence by banks in the form of loans. It is yet another example of exponential growth, but if growth stops for some reason, perhaps if fossil fuel extraction can no longer grow along with the population, then money can no longer grow either, and all of that magic money already created in expectation of the availability of new energy and resources becomes worthless. And here we have the first inklings of the end of the growth game, the banks and industrial civilization itself. This is what will trigger the collapse of industrial civilization. Well, one, one of uh, many things. And thus, don't forget the externalities. As well as the good things, such as stainless steel uh, coffee water heaters delivered by Amazon, dot pro Amazon Prime on a beautiful Sunday, as well as those things that come from all of this growth, there are bad things too. Referred to as externalities by economists and not accounted for within capitalism, and they are also undergoing exponential growth. Remember those water lilies? Well, we're now at the point in ecological destruction, climate change, pollution, and resource depletion that the lilies were that the lilies were at in their tenth year. So uh, that's where we are, according to Joe. Many people say that oil production peaked in 2018. We won't know if that's true for a few more years, but to me. The current instabilities in the world suggest that it is true, and if it is, then growth is finished, and now the time has come for collapse. Back in 1997, I knew quite a lot of this, but at that time I thought that the singularity, yes, and new technologies would allow us a way out of this predicament that we would start to exploit the resources of the rest of the solar system and continue the process long enough to reach a plateau where we could start to repair some of the damage to our own world and deal with these externalities. I no longer believe in any of that. <coughs> we are out of time. The pond is full and growth is done. The narcissists who live in a delusional state where they believe they can do anything and even ignore physical laws like entropy and thermodynamics those narcissists have grabbed all the resources, spent it on their pleasure and power, and 
lie to, manipulate, and gaslight the rest of the people of the world and actively work against potential solutions because any solutions that might have any potentially positive outcome would destroy their power and wealth extraction mechanisms. Hence, sadness. Hence, sadness. There were once some wonderful ideals that came from the Enlightenment. Unfortunately, they were not wise enough to understand the exponential function, and that lack of foresight and wisdom will be the end of all of it. I don't know. The wind has changed. I think I might need to uh, move my windscreen. All that remains now is collapse of both civilization and the population as all species that enter unrestricted exponential growth die off until their numbers are once again within the carrying capacity of their ecosystems. Usually 5 to 10 percent of their peak numbers so 8 billion, 10 percent, what is that, 800 million, five, between 400 and 800 million people. So the now defunct Georgia Guidestones, you know, that got blown up uh, last year, were pretty much on target, 500 million people. Uh, but then every civilization that has ever existed has collapsed. If the lunatics in power are not stupid enough to do something like kick off a nuclear war, then the survivors might see something wonderful emerge in a millennium or three. I will continue my series on surviving this nightmare once I succeed in kicking myself up the backside and stop moping about it all. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Joe J. Mal, for that uh, collapse doomer 101. Uh, so now that I've gotten that off my chest, uh, I'm going to go try out my brand new uh, Planet Nibbling stainless steel coffee water heater and decide whether I'm going to abandon my little dog to the flies and go join the uh, biggest party on the planet with my clueless, lovable friends. Get that bug like that. Get the bug. Get that bug. Get the bug. Get that. Get that bug. Get the bug. Where's that bug? Did you get the bug? Anyway, get out there and enjoy your Amazon Prime deliveries. Oh, you still can. Get that bug like that. Bye, guys. You getting the bug or not? Where's the bug? Get that. Get that bug like that. <laughs>